Today, what I would like to address is installing a database. Um, I will be choosing an open source database rather than a commercial one, so that means it's free. The, the choice that I have is Postgres. Postgres is a very capable, very repeatable, it's used widely in the open source community, and it has a lot of the features that you will find in uh, the popular commercial databases. So let's go ahead and get started. We start by launching our uh, web browser and let's go to a one of the search engines. I'm going to choose Bing. And then type in there download Postgres for Windows and I type at the very end as you see here Enterprise DB. The Enterprise DB is just a uh, group or a company that maintains or they keep uh, the latest installations or the latest uh, released code from the community. So I like to choose those because they keep the latest. But Enterprise DB as well, they take that open source and they do some extra additions and packages and they uh, give it to you but you have to pay money for it. So the one we are downloading right now is the open source free version. And once, when you go to this website, you can choose which version you need to download based on your uh, operating system. Windows 32 is what I have, so I will go ahead and install Windows 32. So you can go ahead and do that. And we can wait for it to start downloading. So it's about... I'll say 50 megabyte. So it'll take just a slice, slightly a little bit. So again, once once we install Postgres, you will you will uh, be able to go ahead and use uh, an open source database and be able to to do to do a lot of the SQL, uh, meaning data storage, data retrieval. You can practice some SQL commands. Um, you can start using it towards web development, you can use it with Java, with anything you want. So it's a, it's a good way to start and later on in the binaries we will be putting some tutorials on SQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, which we will give you the ability to uh, learn how to write code and SQL update, insert, delete, and how to create tables and all that good stuff. And we will be teaching it or giving the tutorial based on the ANSI standard. Meaning, if you learn it here, you can go in and apply it anywhere you want. Okay, now that the Postgres is downloaded, we're going to click on it. And it is going to ask you, do you want to allow this to install? When you install this, you better be on the machine as administrator. Say yes. And now from now, now on, pretty much you are just going to say next, next, next. There might be a couple of things that you have to change, but for the most part, it's easy and straightforward. So let's go ahead and start doing next here. The default place where it installs is under the program files and I normally leave it as such unless you have a reason to change it. And there will be a data directory which is also under the same place. Next. Put the password. This is basically it will install a default database for you we need to have a password, so go ahead and put anything you want. And by default, Postgres installs, or the way you listen, you talk, the port that it installs on is 5432. Keep it as such, again, unless you have a real reason why you want to change it, just leave it as default. 
the locale also leave it as default I'll take just a few minutes right now to do the installation one thing that you look for when you when you are looking for a database or if you're looking for an open source database there are a bunch of them out there uh, you've got uh, commercial ones you've got open source ones in the commercial you've got something like Oracle uh, IBM DB2 or uh, Microsoft SQL Server or you've got uh, even Sybase has a database and you have a bunch of others that are not as popular on the open source Word, you have uh, the one I like, the one which is most widely used is Postgres. It is fully relational uh, and asset compliant. We'll get to that later on, later in our tutorials. And not in this tutorial, maybe in a later tutorial. You've got another database which is also very popular. It was until recently more popular than Postgres. It is MySQL. MySQL was uh, was used heavily for web development for a lot of the quick projects and uh, recently it has it was maintained by uh, Sun Microsystems Oracle not long ago bought Sun Microsystems and they now control MySQL uh, and Oracle being an, a database company not telling what they are going to do in uh, investing more resources or in, in, in MySQL. We hear that there are some, uh, um, a lot of the users or the developers of MySQL are considering something else. We are almost done here. And we can, later on, if there is any need or any interest, we can even show how to do installations on um, Mac and as well as on uh, Linux. The preferred way in big corporations, they prefer Postgres on Linux. That is how you really get the most benefit out of it or the most scalability and the most power. Windows is also as good. still now doing some updates and what it does what it did right now at the very end it's creating a database for you and that this is what with the password that we have provided so it will be a sample database for you to work with and uh, practice and you can create after that your own so now we're done at the very end here, it's going to give you an option to do some Stack Builder. Stack Builder allows you to have some additional features and additional components. I'm going to turn that off right now. I don't need it. We can do it later on anytime. We're done with the installation. How do we access it? We do that by going to the program files. And if you don't see this PG admin tree, you'll see the elephant. If you don't see it right here, you should see it immediately right there. But if you don't, you'll see it also under the all program files. And you'll see it under Postgres 9.2. And PG admin tree is what you want. Here we go. Now you have Postgres installed, you can expand this as much as you want and you will see that right now you've got one database installed and you put the password I normally save it
And once you get into the, to the actual cluster or the actual database of Postgres, you can navigate by looking at the databases. Like I said, right now we only have one database. You can keep drilling down and you can see all of the hierarchies that are involved in database. So in PG Admin, the highest hierarchy is your cluster where you install Postgres. Underneath it, you have databases. Underneath those databases, you have this Postgres. And if you create one, one other database, it will be listed here. And if you drill within the database, you will see there are the catalog, the extensions, and the schema, and the replication. We can drill down in the schema, and it tells you how many schemas there are. We can get to this later on. Under the public schema, which comes by default, you will see that you've got all your objects. The ones we care about are tables, and right now we have really no tables. But I can right-click and create a new table. And we can do this for, for the practice. We name it text, test I mean. You come to the columns. I can come here and add one column. And I will make it, I call it an ID. And I will just make it as integer would be fine. I will add another one. And I will call it maybe name. Data type. We'll call it varkar. Variable character. I went a bit too far. And then I will give it maybe 30 digits here. It's it. I need to pick up the variable character or for that matter, yeah, character varying, and the length, 10, we'll make it even 30, and do OK. So now I have a table called test, and it has two columns, ID and name, that's good enough. So this is my table, right there. And that will be it for now. We showed you now how to we showed you how to install Postgres. We showed you before how you download it and how you install it and how you open up the uh, GUI to access Postgres and we showed you how to create a table. And in the next sessions we will get in more details on how we work with Postgres using SQL. And you have a good day.